I was scrolling through Pinterest looking at fall things like you do, and I came across this picture of pumpkin gnocchi, and I was like, I need to weave that. So let's get started. I used our regular size flat pack frame loom to make this and I warped on 34 strings with 412 linen warp string. Then I started this weaving how I start every weaving, which is to weave in a piece of cardstock and then do some twining and a few rows of plain weave with a super bulky yarn. I chose this beautiful color from Unfettered Co. We do have discount codes for you in the description box below. And it's a five millimeter recycled cotton string and the color is called Nori. It is this beautiful, very warm charcoal color. For the fringe, I used one strand of the string around two warp strings using a Raya knot. Then to weave this, I just did a classic plain weave over one, under one, the most basic form of weaving. One thing I will let you know about weaving with such a chunky string is you will have to sort of untwist it as you're going around the corners to make those edges a little bit neater. Once I wove it to the length that I wanted, I flipped it over and tucked in all the ends. For some of these ends, I actually split the string apart so that it was a little bit thinner so that hopefully it wouldn't show in the front as much and it definitely worked. The pieces all finished being woven and now we're gonna do the fun part, which is create some wool pumpkins. I'm gonna try to create a few pumpkins in a few different sizes to sort of give our pumpkin patch some dimension. So to create the pumpkins, I'm gonna use a little bit of wool roving. I'm just picking a random amount because I want my pumpkins to be a few different sizes. Now what I'm gonna do is sort of floof out my wool and then I'm gonna pretend like I'm making a bun. If you've never made buns before, basically what you do is you sort of tuck all the ends around to make a nice little dome around the top. So this will be a nice small pumpkin. And once I have it in this pinched state, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take my needle very carefully around my fingers and I'm just gonna start needle felting into the wool itself. And I wanna bring in all of those little edges into the center. Every once in a while, since I'm, we since I'm felting onto this foam pad, I'm just gonna lift it up off of it so that I don't felt the whole thing into it. So I'm just going to keep felting into the center. So you can see that we sort of have this like little pinched ball happening here. And this is going to be the bottom of our pumpkin. So we won't actually be seeing this part from the top. Now with needle felting, always make sure that whatever direction you put the needle in, you come back out in the same direction. So you can't stick it in, turn it and pull it back out. That is a recipe for breaking your needle. So you can see already it's starting to stick together all on its own. And that's exactly what we want. Now these aren't gonna be super felted pumpkins. We still want some of that just roving texture in here too, but we do wanna create that initial shape that we need to make it look like a pumpkin. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna continue felting in the center because we wanna create almost a little divot like a real pumpkin tends to have where the stem will sit. And I don't like the way this part is sticking out, so I'm gonna try to bring that into the middle a little bit more. So now we have sort of a general circular shape and now we need to start making it look a little bit more like a pumpkin. So we want these little divots so that we get that sort of scalloped kind of shape that a pumpkin has. And to do this, I'm just gonna pick a line and I'm gonna just gently felt in. You see how already that's tucking in a little bit? So I'm just gonna try to stay in a straight line. I'm angling as I go around, I'm angling my felting needle. You can also just hold it up and felt in. And you don't have to do this very much. And I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit at a time to start. So then I'm gonna pick another line and I'm gonna create another little crease. You can flip it over to continue that line as well. Just be very careful of where your fingers are. And we're gonna go over this more yet, but we're just gonna get the general shape that we want to start. And I'm just gonna continue that all the way around the pumpkin. So now I'm just going back around the little pumpkin and I'm just gonna emphasize those lines that we did to begin with and just felt them in a little bit more. This pumpkin is looking really good. So now I'm just going back to the center to try to create again that little bit of a divot in the center. 
so I have a place to put my stem later. Now that I'm happy with this little pumpkin, I'm going to go ahead and make a few more in different sizes. I'm done needle felting all my pumpkins and I've arranged them on my piece and I need to add some stems to them. And I thought what better way to add stems than some twigs that um, I found at my parents' house. So I have some side cutters and my hot glue gun and I'm just going to be cutting off little pieces of these to create the stems. So I have a few different sizes of twigs because I wasn't sure what would look most natural on each pumpkin. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces here. I think I wanna stay pretty short and just sort of see, like that is a little bit, that's too long for sure. Maybe something like that. And then I have like some thicker ones. I'm happy with my little pumpkin stems. And so I'm going to carefully hot glue these. I'm thinking I'm gonna put the hot glue directly on the stem and then stick it to the pumpkin to try to avoid getting more glue than necessary on the piece. I think the biggest thing when using hot glue is just to try to use it sparingly and then clean up all those little spider webs that kind of happen when you're using it to you know get rid of the evidence so you can't tell that there's any hot glue on there all right so i have stems on all of the pumpkins and i came up with this super easy way to create leaves and this is how you do it you're gonna grab a super chunky cotton string like this one that has a lot of strands and then you can grab something like embroidery thread or in my case warp string and i'm basically just going to cut a small piece off of my warp string but all i'm going to do is tie this on here as tight as i can get it within reason i'm going to knot this up so that it's nice and secure you can even do if you're paranoid like me you can do a triple knot if you like then we can trim off those ends like i don't want to make them too short but just so that they'll disappear underneath and then a little further up you're going to trim off the string far up enough that your warp string won't slip off then you can just sort of unravel the string or if you have something like a rope brush you can use that as well and just sort of comb out the string so we've basically started with a very basic tassel then from there what we can do is trim this into more of a leaf shape so i'm just sort of tapering it down and then that is our first leaf and the idea here is to place the leaves under at least some of the pumpkins just to add another little element that makes this feel like we're really in a pumpkin patch i've made a bunch of leaves and placed them on the piece sort of underneath the pumpkins which is where i want them to live so now i'm ready to start gluing everything down i'm going to start at one end and just work my way across I'm going to remove this pumpkin here so I can secure the leaves down first because I do want them to sit underneath the pumpkin so we don't see the warp string tied around them. I'm gonna use this twig to hang my weaving from. It has a little bit of a curve, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna finish this up so we can look at the final piece. The wall hanging is all done and I am legitimately obsessed. So let's have a look at the final piece. I love this so much. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist next.